Hello and welcome to Tampa, Florida, a city that has become very familiar with hockey excellence. We've got sunshine, great weather, and some incredible talent on display this week at Emily Arena, home of the Tampa Bay Lightning. This is Friday nights at the Frozen Four. We're here at Sparkman Wharf to honor the best of the best in Division I men's college hockey. Hi everyone, I'm Jameson Coyle from the NHL Network and welcome to the 43rd annual presentation of the Hobie Baker Award honoring college hockey's top player. Additional national awards were announced earlier today and we're going to get to those in just a bit. From the original Hobie Baker winner, Neil Broughton, back in 1981, to more recent winners like Jack Eichel and Kale McCarr, the award is more than just hockey excellence. It's what Hobie Baker exemplified over 100 years ago. Outstanding skills in all aspects of the game. Great character, sportsmanship, and scholastic achievement. Baker entered Princeton University in 1910, bringing his exceptional skill set in both football and hockey to campus. He was referred to as the king of hockey and widely regarded as America's top amateur athlete. The Hall of Famer's legend lives on in the Hobie Baker Memorial Award. Friday at the Frozen Four allows us to celebrate the great contributions to college hockey from this past season. Just over an hour ago, several national awards were handed out to deserving student athletes. Let's start things off with the announcement of the Mike Richter Award, given annually to the top goalie in college hockey. The Hockey Commissioners Association sponsors the annual Mike Richter Award, given to the top men's goaltender in NCAA Division I hockey. This year's winner is a junior from Northeastern, Devin Levi. This marks the first time a player has earned the Richter Award twice, with Levi also earning the top goaltender honors last season. Like last year, Levi led the NCAA in save percentage with a mark of 93.3% while facing 1,143 shots on the season. He had a goals against average of 2.24 while recording six shutouts. His work this year not only earned him Hockey East top goaltender honors, he was also named the Hockey East Player of the Year. Levi was named the MVP of the 2023 Beanpot after backstopping the Huskies to their fourth Beanpot win in the last five tournaments and for the second straight season was also named a top 10 finalist for the Hobie Baker Award. The award is named for Mike Richter, who enjoyed a stellar playing career highlighted by 14 years with the New York Rangers, including a Stanley Cup in 1994. A member of the Hall of Fame, Richter was also outstanding on a number of USA hockey teams and played collegiately for Wisconsin. The Mike Richter Award has been presented annually since 2014. The Hobie Baker Committee also partners with the Hockey Humanitarian Foundation to award men and women in college hockey who give back to the community. This year's winner is forward Gabby Hughes from the University of Minnesota Duluth. Let's learn more about her terrific off-ice contributions. Winning the award to me means a lot more than just a personal victory. It's a victory for mental health awareness in general. I think having mental health on a platform like this and getting Sophie Squad's name out there to have everyone know what we're about and what we're doing is extremely important. And I think winning this award will help us to continue to spread that awareness and reach more people beyond Minnesota. When I found out about the award and, and winning it, I was actually able to hear the news with my mom um, from my coach. And me and my mom both started just bawling our eyes out. And, I couldn't wait to tell Amy, Sophie's mom, about what we've accomplished and what we're gonna continue to accomplish with Sophie Squad. I think it's one of those things that people don't want to talk about, but when you aren't talking about it is when it gets really hard. And I think that drives me to, to spread that awareness because I've been there personally. I've lost many people in my life to suicide and, and to their mental health battles. And if we can continue to spread that awareness, that talking about it and continuing to build and, and get that stigma out of there that you need to toughen up or, or you don't need to talk about it, you'll be fine, is, is extremely important to me and I hold that very near and dear to my heart. So mental health to me is my number one priority in my own mind and in my own body. And I hope that I can continue to spread that to, to other people. Um, if, you're, if your mental health isn't good, then other parts of your life aren't gonna be good. So taking care of that is, is extremely important and definitely number one. 
How about one more hand for Gabby Hughes? Earlier, the American College Hockey Coaches Association announced their first and second team All-Americans. Here's a closer look at the best players in college hockey this season. Here are the 2023 American Hockey Coaches Association All-American teams. First up, the second team East All-Americans, which features a pair of Quinnipiac Bobcats in Zach Metza and Yanni Peretz while Alex Jeffries is Merrimack's first All-American since 2013. The second team West All-American team showcases a trio of Denver pioneers and the nation's leading goal scorer in Western Michigan's Jason Poland. Northeastern's Devin Levi and Aiden McDonough repeat as first team East All-Americans, while Harvard and Quinnipiac run their total to three All-Americans this season. And finally, the West first team All-Americans with five players in this year's Frozen Four, in Minnesota's Brock Faber, Logan Cooley, and Matthew Nyes, along with Luke Hughes and Adam Fantilli of Michigan. Also presented each year are two additional awards sponsored by the Hockey Commissioners Association, including the Tim Taylor Rookie of the Year Award, named for the former Yale and U.S. Olympic head coach. This year's Tim Taylor Rookie of the Year is Michigan forward Adam Fantilli. The Derek Hines Unsung Hero Award is presented each year and named for the former Army hockey player who was killed in the line of duty in Afghanistan. This year's Derek Hines Unsung Hero Award winner is Noah Wilson from Army West Point. Each year, the Hobie Baker Committee also honors a legend of college hockey for their contributions to the collegiate game. This year, we're proud to announce former Boston College coach, Jerry York as the Legend Award winner. Here's more on Coach York. Each year, the Hobie Baker Committee honors a legend of college hockey. This year's recipient is Jerry York, the all-time winningest coach in college hockey history. His iconic legacy spanned 50 years with three different schools in three leagues. York is one of only three coaches to have won national titles at two different schools. Coach York began his illustrious career in 1972 with Clarkson University in the ECAC, where he guided the Golden Knights for seven years and securing one ECAC title. He then moved to the CCHA to coach Bowling Green University for the next 15 years, earning five CCHA championships and a national title in 1984. His alma mater, Boston College, came calling, and Jerry guided the Eagles for the next 28 years collecting nine Hockey East playoff titles, 18 NCAA tournament appearances, 12 trips to the Frozen Four, and an additional four national titles. York retired after the 2022 season, having won 1,123 contests, becoming the only coach to surpass 1,000 wins. He coached numerous All-Americans and Stanley Cup winners, and coached four Hobie Baker Award winners. George McPhee and Brian Holzinger at Bowling Green, and Mike Motto and Johnny Goudreau at Boston College. Amongst his many accolades, York is enshrined in both the U.S. and Canadian Hockey Halls of Fame. All right, we are just minutes away from revealing the 2023 Hobie Baker Award winner. We're going to let you sweat it out, figuratively and literally, here down in Tampa. We'll be back in about two minutes to meet the three Hobie Hat Trick finalists. My name's Kirsten Kroll, and I am joined with Jordan Leopold, a 2002 Hobie Baker Award winner from the University of Minnesota and a former NHL defenseman. Jordan, wasn't that long ago that you were in these guys' shoes. What was it like for you when you won the Hobie Baker Award? Uh, I was very nervous. You know, that was one of those things. You sit in those chairs, and you don't know what's going to be revealed, and you just... Uh, you know, take it uh, for what it's worth. And you know what, the thing is, we're down here in Tampa in this wonderful environment, but all these Gopher fans out here, I mean, give it to you guys. Okay? We're, we're loud, we're proud, and, and definitely uh, go Gophers. so. 
And is there a piece of advice that you would offer not only to the finalists, but also to all of the men that are com here in the, the Frozen Four competing? I, I don't I don't think it's advice. It's just go with the flow, enjoy it. Um, for me, uh, 21 years ago, it was a blur. It really was. Uh, families around, a lot of distractions, but looking back, it's the best time of my playing career, and I, I played a long time in the NHL as well. So, um, But college hockey is where my heart was, and Minnesota is definitely where my heart is. Lots of applause for that one down here. And one of the most exciting things is there's been representation from college hockey everywhere here at this Frozen Four. When you think about it, at this level, what is your favorite part of the game? Um, just there, there's so much parity out there. And, and when I played, it was there were less teams. There's a lot more teams now, a lot more opportunity for guys. Um, when I was an American kid coming up through it, there were so many Canadian guys that Americans didn't really get a big chance in NHL. And now you're seeing tons of them. You're seeing these guys from Phoenix, L.A., all over the place. All right, Jordan. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be rejoining the NHL Network. Welcome back to Tampa, Florida, the site of this year's NCAA Frozen Four Championship and the Hobie Baker Award Ceremony. The Hobie Baker High School Character Award began in 2003 to honor high school hockey players who live out the Hobie Baker ideal that character builds excellence. Today, we honor approximately 800 players across 25 states, including 35 recipients in this year's host state here in Florida. Recipients of this prestigious award are selected by their high school coach based on a number of factors that demonstrate character such as coachability, overcoming adversity, integrity, commitment, teamwork, community leadership, and outstanding sportsmanship. Congratulations to all of our winners of the Hobie Baker High School Character Award and thank you for your contributions to the game. Tonight, we'll be presenting our 43rd Hobie Baker Award to college hockey's top player. Now let's meet our three finalists and have them come up here on stage. From the University of Minnesota, please welcome Logan Cooley. From the University of Michigan, welcome Adam Fantilli. And also from the University of Minnesota, welcome Matthew Nyes. These three players have turned in fabulous seasons, so let's learn more about their impressive years. The Hobie Baker Award Selection Committee has narrowed the field to three finalists for this year's Hobie. First up is Logan Cooley from the University of Minnesota. The freshman centerman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was the third overall NHL draft pick last summer of the Arizona Coyotes and has lived up to his lofty billing. An outstanding skater possessing prolific playmaking abilities, Cooley has soared to second in the national scoring charts with 57 points and is tied for first with 37 assists. Cooley entered the Frozen Four tournament on a 15-game point streak collecting 30 points, including nine in four playoff games. He leads all players in the nation with a plus 37 rating. The Big Ten Conference named him to first team all-conference and to the all-freshman team. The native of Pittsburgh has produced 18 multiple point games and six game-winning goals, third in the nation. Cooley represented the U.S. at the World Junior Championship and led the team in scoring. The next finalist is another freshman phenom in Adam Fantilli from the University of Michigan. He has helped the Wolverines to their second straight Frozen Four by leading the nation in scoring with 64 points in 35 games, averaging a national best 1.83 points per game. His combination of skills, hockey sense, and high compete level will make him a very high draft pick at the NHL's next draft. 
Fantilli is second in the nation with 29 goals and is fifth in assists. The Big Ten Conference honored him as freshman of the year, first team all-conference, and joined Logan Cooley on the conference all-freshman team. In addition to his standout freshman season, Fantilli of Nobleton, Ontario, helped lead Canada to a gold medal at the 2023 World Junior Championship. The third finalist makes it a hat trick for the Big Ten Conference. Sophomore forward Matthew Nyes of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. A line mate of Logan Cooley and the Gophers, the two forwards combined with Jimmy Snuggerud to become one of the most formidable Lions college hockey has seen in quite some time, averaging five points per game over their last 15 contests. Nyes has an exceptional blend of size and speed and thrives in all aspects of the game. Entering the Frozen Four tournament, he has 21 goals and 20 assists and came up huge at key moments, leading the nation with seven game-winning goals, three of them coming in overtime. A product of Phoenix, Arizona, Nyes was named Big Ten Player of the Year and First Team All-Conference. He is a second round draft prospect of the Toronto Maple Leafs and played for Team USA at the Beijing Winter Olympics. All right, impressive stuff right there. But we know these guys are great hockey players, so we're joined up here. This is my favorite part every year. We have family members of these three Hobie finalists. We're gonna learn a little bit more about them. We're starting off with Kathy and Eric Cooley, Logan's parents. How are you guys feeling right now? <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> Who's Logan Cooley? I'm so nervous. Well, we know who Logan Cooley is, and we know he's incredible. He's so much fun to watch on the ice, but it took a little convincing, you said, during Learn to Play to actually get him to step foot on the ice. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> basically, we went to the tryout. It was a three-day tryout. First day, we get him in there, get him dressed, lined up with the other kids. He, um, by the time I turned around, walked into the lobby, he was already there in front of me. <laughs> So it was much of the same the second day. Third day, we got him in there. He went out of the ice and never looked back from there. But then, right after that, he wanted to play goalie, like most young kids do. How'd you convince him not to? Because it worked out pretty well. Yeah, so the, he has two older brothers that loved um, having a goalie in the house. So, uh, but dad did not, he did not want to be a goalie dad. So um, his uncle bought him a set of goalie gear that only come out when dad was at work. <laughs> so um, he got the opportunity to lace him up and play goalie and got lit up like a Christmas tree and never, <laughs> never, never wanted to play again. So. <laughs> That'll do it. And here he is in one of the biggest moments of his life, 24 hours ahead of one of the biggest games of his life. You see him over there, do you have a message for your son? Good luck. <laughs> Mom? Good luck. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Thank you very much, the Coolies. All right, moving on. This is Luca Fantilli. He's the older brother of Adam Fantilli. You guys have been teammates at a lot of levels, and I mean a lot of levels. Obviously at Michigan, but Kimball Union Academy, the Chicago Steel. Usually brothers, older brothers specifically, want to get away from the younger brother. You guys had a different relationship. Tell me about that. Uh, it's like so special. Like growing up, we never. Uh even dreamt about playing together because we were different age groups. But uh, when he came over at Kimball Union Academy and, and we got to step on the ice together, it was truly a really special moment. And uh, we wanted to keep it going as long as we could. So, You guys have a very special relationship, but your parents told me this morning you guys are also very, very different. And an example of that is your dorm room right now. You look over at Adam's side, and it's, it's perfectly clean. Your side's a mess, they said. Um, your parents said that was a great yin and yang. You balance each other out. Do you agree with that as far as the ice and off ice stuff? Oh, yeah, 100%. He, uh, he definitely keeps me in check sometimes, and uh, I get him loose when I need to because he's a little uptight sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> but we have, uh, we have a lot of fun in the dorms, and uh, he helps cl clean up you know, the dorm a little bit, especially on my side, but uh, it's been great. Yeah. All right, little brother sitting over there, one of the biggest moments of his life. Do you have any uh, words of encour encouragement for him or a special message? Uh, I'm just so proud of what he's done so far, and uh, you know he deserves every second of this. So I'm super proud. It's good luck. Congratulations. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, another older brother. We've got Phil Nice, the older brother of Matthew Nice. We heard about their sibling relationship. Yours sounded more like a sibling rivalry. Tell us about that growing up. Yeah, you could say so. Um, yeah, I think we're always 
you know, competitive natured and uh, trying to get the best of each other. And uh, I think in a way that's something that motivated each of us and, and pushed each other to be a little bit better. And uh, I'd say that we're still, you know, in, in that sort of, uh, you know, period, even when we go home in the summer and when we're together. And uh, I think it's served us well. For as tense as this guy is on the ice, though, it sounds like he's pretty chill, laid back, and fun off the ice. Give us a perspective of what your brother's like off the ice. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, anyone that knows him well, they'll tell you that he's pretty outgoing and goofy. And, uh, but he, he has a great, you know, sense of humor, loves to make people laugh. And uh, you know, I think that's why people love being around him. And uh, I know our family enjoys it a lot, you know, when we're together at home in the summer. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, personality, uh, you know, treats him pretty well. Any words of encouragement, special message here for your younger brother? Yeah, I think just, you know, soak in this moment. You know, it's obviously pretty special to be here and uh, getting to play in a game like that. So, you know, live in that moment, you know, take advantage of it, and uh, best of luck. Soak in the moment like I am. Look at my forehead. We're soaking it in. Uh, another round of applause for all the family members up here. Thank you very much. I told you you'd be fine. All right, so the moment we've all been waiting for, who will win the 2023 Hobie Baker Award? It was a difficult decision for the selection committee as all three finalists were clearly worthy. I'm gonna take one more commercial break and then we will be back to reveal the winner. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. now joined by 1988 Hobie Baker Award winner Rob Stauber, a goaltender from the University of Minnesota. Rob, thank you so much for being here. Again, you uh, being in these guys' shoes before, what was it like for you to come away with the award? Well, it was a long time ago. In fact, I see Jim Rich here, who was uh, probably a part of uh, taking that in uh, you know, 35, 36 years ago, a local TV guy from Duluth, Minnesota. But uh, it's a special thing. Here's what I would say for sure to any one of the guys. I know they would trade this award for a national championship, and uh, it's going to be a great game tomorrow, and, and good luck, Gopher guys. We really want uh, you guys to take home the most important award. And for you on a personal note, what's it been like being down in Tampa? Well, it's, it was awesome just to see all the Gopher fans the other day. Just not just the Gopher fans, but college hockey here in Tampa is just incredible to see the uh, stadium filled. Uh, I think it says a lot about the uh, game of hockey and where it's at. And when you think back on your playing days, is there one player who stands out who would just give you a really hard time whenever you were in net? Well, a few. Uh, the, namely, it would have been a Badger or a uh, North Dakota Fighting Sioux in, the, in those days. So one of the, they were always, we had great rivalries in the old WCHA. So um, I think there's a lot of people that probably can attest to that. So no one in particular, just great rivalries. And thinking back to your collegiate career again, what is your favorite memory, either then or even from your NHL days? Well, I think it's just playing in the uh, Frozen Four. Um, I think uh, any kid growing up in the state of Minnesota, uh, if you can get to the University of Minnesota, you're lucky enough to play there. You want to come home with a national championship. Uh, unfortunately, in, in my days, we came up a little bit short, but it's uh, great memories. Well, Rob, thank you so much for your time. Guys, we're going to take a quick break again before we rejoin the NHL Network. Welcome back to the Hobie Baker Award Ceremony here at Sparkman Wharf in sunny, very sunny, Tampa, Florida. We've watched as a variety of top-notch college hockey players have been honored with postseason awards. We've got one more to go, the Hobie. Each year, a new chairman is chosen to guide the Hobie Baker Committee over countless hours of volunteer time to make this all happen. Please welcome the 2023 Hobie Baker Chairman, Joey Riley, to say a few words and announce the winner. I'll be announcing the 43rd recipient of this prestigious award after a few brief words. First, I'd like to thank the foundation, committee, and the selection committee for all their hard work. I would like to thank my wife, family, and friends for the support for this opportunity. Second, the Hobie Baker Award is more than just best player in college hockey. It's an award that is given based on character and excellence both on and off the ice. 
I'd like to take a moment to recognize one of our previous winners, Brian Bonin. In 1996, Brian Bonin came into a sporting goods store that I was working at, and I had the opportunity to meet him and to spend some time getting to know him. He is one of the reasons that I am so very passionate about this award. Over the years, Brian has been a huge supporter of all of the Hobie Baker Award events. He tirelessly gives his time to make sure that we know he supports us in everything we represent. This exemplifies what a Hobie Baker winner is. It's not just an award, but recognize the aspects of Hobie Baker's life and how he chose to live it. From his famous handshake to his amazing sportsmanship, he shows us what the possibilities are when we play fair and decent. Finally, these three finalists, Logan Cooley, Adam Fantilli, and Matthew Nyes, all represent the best possible version of what this award stands for, and all of them are deserving of it. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner for this award. At this point, I'd like to invite a partner from Price Waterhouse Coopers, Andrew Erzar, to please bring me the envelope. And the winner is Adam Fantilli, Forward, University of Michigan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, not a great public speaker, so bear with me here. Um, uh, it's with great honor uh, and humility that I stand before you tonight uh, to receive this award. Uh, I'm deeply grateful for this opportunity, uh, none of which would be possible without the support um, and guidance of so many incredible individuals. First, I'd like to thank the committee uh, for putting on this uh, ceremony tonight. To be to even nominated and have my name in the same discussion as so many great players um, is an honor. So uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank my parents for their unconditional support and encouragement in my career thus far. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys, and there aren't enough words to describe the impact you guys have had on my life. Luca, uh, my best friend and brother, uh, and someone I'm lucky enough to call my teammate. Not many guys get to play with their brother but I've been fortunate enough to do it for the last four years. None of this would be possible without you today, or without you being with me through dorm rooms and billet houses, so thank you, man. Uh, to Coach Narado, Rassi, McCult, and all the support staff in Michigan, like Brew, Joe, Topher, Evan, Jalen, Christy, and Ashley. Um, thank you for your commitment to the program and to us as a team. You've gone above and beyond since I've stepped foot on campus, and we appreciate everything you guys do more than you know. To the children of Yost and the Michigan faithful, thanks for your endless support to our program and dedication to our atmosphere. You make it the best, you make it the best place to play in college hockey. To my teammates, you guys are my brothers. Uh, I've never been on a team that's made everyone feel like family as much as you guys. This has been an unforgettable ride. Thank you to our senior class. You guys have had such an impact on us as freshmen and our team as a whole. You guys are amazing. Between the passing of Hums and watching Holtzi fight for his life in the ICU to scoring the OT winner to send us to the Big Ten semifinals, not to mention the countless moped incidents from Seamus. Uh, we've truly battled it all. Um, we've been through hell and back, and I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to do it with. This award serves as a reminder that while an individual can contribute to a collective goal, it's the people around them that make it possible. My family, coaches, teammates, and friends take this home alongside me today. I'm forever thankful for what you've done for me. I'm sure there's many people that I wasn't able to mention today, but please know that you've all had a hand in getting myself and our team to this point. Thank you so much, everybody, and go blue. You don't get to go anywhere. Adam Fantilli, everybody, this year's Hobie Baker Award winner. 
All right, I got to ask you, what was going through your head when you heard your name announced there? Because I saw your parents, roller coaster of emotions out there, fun to watch. You'll have to go back and look at that video, but what was going through your head? Um, yeah, it's really nerve-wracking. I mean, these guys are both phenomenal hockey players, so it, it could have gone any way, and um, I'm extremely honored and grateful to, to have my name called. What was your earliest memory of hockey? What can you take us back to the early days? What got you into it? What inspired you? Who impacted you? Uh, my, my, my entire family. I mean, my dad got me in uh, pretty early uh, with learning to skate and, and free skates, just kind of wheeling around with him and uh, always trying to catch my brother was, uh, was what did it for me. Your brother and your parents this morning said this was one of the most special seasons, one of the most special teams that you've ever been a part of. How tight knit was this group and, and what was this past season like for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the tightest team I think I've ever been on and that's a credit to our seniors and our leadership group. Um, those guys are phenomenal. Uh, they made us feel so welcome right from the start. Uh, and they told us that uh, the closest teams win. And I think we did quite a bit of that with, with, what we were, uh, with how close we were able to get. What's next for you? Michigan has a history of guys going pretty high in the draft and then coming back for a sophomore season. Uh, I, don't, I don't know yet, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to get them fired up out there. Big Blue is certainly here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Adam Fantilli, this year's Hobie Baker Award winner. Congratulations. All right, everybody, that is all from Tampa, Florida. We hope you enjoyed the show celebrating the terrific achievements these college hockey players have accomplished all season long. Next year, the 44th Hobie Baker Award will be announced from the Frozen Four in St. Paul, Minnesota. Until then, enjoy tomorrow's championship game. Thank you.